for me, Mitsuki is one of the most broken characters within Tokyo Ghoul Re, even within the Tokyo Ghoul universe. Her character, or maybe him I should specifically call, is definitely the epitome of a broken character. Someone that is so fragile, someone that is shattered in so many different directions and point of views that it's very difficult to pinpoint where that person is either sane or quote unquote insane. I have this problem, however, especially within the community, that a lot of people put Mitsuki down as a Karnaki clone, and they couldn't be further from the truth. If anything, Mitsuki is a more realistic depiction of potentially today's society, and the people within today's society, more specifically, are people that struggle with gender dysphoria and kind of finding their true selves, whether they feel like they're more of a man when they're a woman, and vice versa, obviously. Even the people that don't consider to be either of those. There's a lot of things uh, that people feel feel a lot more comfortable with uh, in today's society and I think Mitsuki is a very harsh and realistic example for that. Obviously on the more harsher side but it does bring in some very relative conversations, some very interesting ones at that. Her character and her point of view is extremely all over the place and it kind of all starts at a very young age for her. Trying to see things from her point of view is very difficult, considering her world is so blinded with cruelty, overshadowed with anxiety and being uncomfortable 24-7 and just not being the person that she wants to be. What interests me the most, I think, is her childhood and how she was treated. Obviously, she was born a female but felt extremely uncomfortable being one, so she wanted to kind of live as a male. She wanted to use male pronouns even to some extent where it was offensive, just to kind of push that point a little bit further. But all of this reflects her childhood heavily, as the household she lived in was extremely broken. Her father, even a small portion of her mother, were very corrupt, were very distant and very cruel to her, which sadly enough leads her to be a more prominent broken character, which inlays these very psychotic episodes that she does have throughout the series. A lot of people felt that these psychotic episodes were not justified, but it's completely failed to realize or even understand the amount of emotional trauma that she went through as a child. Being theoretically raped, being beaten, being almost drowned to death. For all of these things on multiple different occasions, her life was completely miserable and no one helped her. This fractures her mind, and when you try and see that from her point of view, it's very hard to realize that she did not even think think about committing suicide. Her life was so difficult and so brutal, you would think that if you were in that position yourself that you would just kind of want to end it all. Not knowing who you are, not knowing what gender that you feel comfortable with, not feeling safe in your own home, getting beaten, abused, raped, and almost killed, not feeling safe at any point in time. This psychotic nature that inlays into her character starts at a very young age as she goes to completely kill her family. And it was labeled as a vicious ghoul attack when you obviously find out that that was her doing which she doesn't realistically remember. It's something that she suppresses, which happens a lot with emotionally broken victims. They're going to completely suppress the most traumatic experiences within their life, especially something of this caliber where she causes this event, where she goes and kills people because of what they've done to her. It's hard to think that she's a bad person because of it, but the lifestyle that she was living, the day-to-day -day fear of death is a very harsh reality to come to terms with. She got to a point where she broke and she snapped and she killed and then she suppressed absolutely everything to try and move forward with her life, which kicks off Tokyo Ghoul Re and where we see her for the first time as a character portraying as a guy. Now in these stages of his life now, it's very nonchalant. There's still a lot of kind of aggression and emotional kind of pulling with his character, understanding himself, what he's comfortable with. But this all starts to kind of be brought up and, you know, bubbled to the surface when Carnegie or Hayase comes into the picture. As this is kind of the first time that he as a person, as a human being, is feeling the comfort of another person. Hayase would talk to Mitsuki as a normal human being as a male, as something that she felt more comfortable at at the time. And then he would ultimately confide in Hayase. Add in the benefit of the house that he was in and the comfortability for it, this was a complete new experience. Something that was probably started off being uncomfortable, but ever so quickly started to enjoy, started to love. You can reflect with that. You can understand that. And Hayase kind of made that all possible with building this beautiful foundation for them. However, the biggest thing to take from Tokyo Ghoul Re, from Hayase, 
Hayase and what he built from Mitsuki's perspective, right, Hayase was the pillar for this. He was the foundation. He was the pillar. The reason why everything that he had at the moment was so happy and joyous and comfortable was all because of him. And if that disappeared, where would he go? What would happen? So when Hayase starts to change, when Hayase starts to get more development, starts to understand who he was previously, things start to change. Mitsuki also starts to change. The psychotic episodes start to come back. The foundation and the pillar that was this comfortable lifestyle that he was finally happy with starts to traverse into a more vicious nature, a more vicious outlook of things. And he evidently starts to twist and bend a little bit more. Mitsuki starts to lose control of what's in front of him. The biggest thing of understanding the split perspective is that it comes and goes. So if you haven't already noticed, it used a female pronoun before she was part of the CCG. And then when he was a part of the CCG, he used the male pronoun. But throughout the story, everything starts to get split up and changed. She starts to use more male and female pronouns within the same sentence. And the Japanese language, I believe, reflects that pretty heavily. Unfortunately, us English readers can't really understand the full concept of Mitsuki's character because of that. There's so many Japanese pronouns for male males and females and even are neutral pronouns. They don't have any uh, sex orientation to it that she actually uses. She then also confides in different natures. At one point, she would consider herself a male, another point a female, another point in between. And it's actually really heartbreaking to kind of read. And a lot of people never really seen the full scope for that, but she was extremely broken throughout these points. This is kind of moving on towards when Hayase was, you know, split back into Carnegie and the, the story for Carnegie came back into the big picture, she was all over the place. She was out of control. Her mind was splitting back and forth and there was no coherency to it. She was losing it. And then she faces the biggest event of her life once again, which was the torso situation, which brings back the psychotic episodes and the experience that she went through as a child. The torso was someone that raped her, injured her, brutally affected her lifestyle the way she thought at this very unstable point of time and obviously this is a massive traversal point and a kind of no return point for her character kind of forgets everything that happened up to that point and becomes very malicious becomes vicious becomes very vindictive and just almost evil in nature but it's almost like you can't blame her for it the torso reflection was that of her father someone that done the exact same thing and the result for it was in similar nature torso was cut up limb by limb his uh, genitals were completely warped and gone completely she came out on top but prior to that she was so broken and so kind of oozed into the idea for it she was like groomed almost she couldn't break free because she was so mentally emotionally and physically broken she realistically couldn't fight back at that time and then she cracked the torso's body was the outcome for it a literal torso it's so difficult to think that everything after that point is kind of like a blur for her shifting between personalities shifting between genders and using that and reflecting that onto Carnegie where he slash she becomes so obsessed with the idea of getting Carnegie back or getting Hayase back because that was the most stable part of his life in a time where everything was actually going well where he felt comfortable where he felt safe and that was all thanks to Hayase but one person was taking that away and that was Toka so that implements the idea of taking away the biggest person that she feared wanting to kill Toka wanting to hurt civilians or use civilians to get rid of Toka and you know kind of bait her into a situation that's how warped her ideology became that's how warped her mind became it's not something she came to accept or understand until Yuri came into the picture realistically was this other pillar that she never recognized but someone that was always beside him there's also the admiration the obsession even that she had with Hayase at that time little did she know he was uh, completely captivated by Hayase and Hayase meant the world to him. So these psychotic episodes that were kind of taking place reflected Hayase or Carnegie in some way shape or form. Obviously these psychotic episodes were very detrimental, they were very vicious and they were usually filled with killing intent and I think that is a very tragic but beautiful betrayal of her mind. I could only imagine trying to see things from her point of view how warped the world would have been, how the one glimmer of hope was slowly being taken away from her, cascading away into the wind. She would be left alone again, with no support, with no foundation, with no glimmer of hope. I think if she was left alone, 
it would have easily broken into something else very more malicious, very similar to Carnegie. They parallel each other rather interestingly, both Carnegie and Mitsuki. But at that point, Yuri steps in, really brings her back down to that original state that Mitsuki as a male figure was comfortable with at the time. At this point, I don't know what her gender was or if she even considered to have a gender. She was so distraught and she used so many different pronouns in her own sentences. At that point, that was the peak of her loss. Everything was ever so slowly warping to a conclusion, whether it be good or bad. And just lucky enough, someone was there to kind of catch her. Someone was there to save her from that extent, from losing herself and turning into something that realistically she would have never came back from. She was always redeemable with all the wild things that she was doing. But understanding these wild things, why she or he was doing the things that they were doing, it's it's crazy to me that people think that he or she was just a ripoff of Carnegie. When there is so much emotion, so much development there, so much hidden beauty that you'd only have to pull back the surface and just pay a little bit of attention for his or her character and you would understand it. You would see it all laid out there beautifully, perfectly. Without a doubt for me, Mitsuki is an incredible character and the amount of trauma and experiences that he slash she has been through is insane. It's a ridiculous amount that would drive most likely anyone to commit suicide. Soi Ishii should have done a phenomenal job with them and without a doubt the reason why they are one of my favorite characters within the story. So, with that being said, that is basically it. I know a lot of people do not like Mitsuki for obviously the reasons what happened within the story, but just peeling back the surface and the personal bias, you can really see a lot to their character and how well constructed it is. It did kind of fall off towards the end, I will admit, but everything within it is so beautifully constructed, without a doubt. So let me know what you think of their character. Do you love them? Do you hate them? Do you appreciate them? Let me know. But I'm actually going to end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.